In this video, we're going to talk about placing foundation walls and wall foundations. Uh, foundation walls and wall foundations are two different concepts, but they're related. So foundation walls is actually a wall. The wall foundation is the foundation that supports the wall, um, which is also called wall footing, strip footing, continuous footing. So to look at the foundation wall details, we need to go to ACE page 1.1. Um, okay. And uh, let's take a look at those cross-hatched walls, those are the foundation walls. To further examine its detail, we can actually inspect the uh, section view, which is S4.0, detail view 3. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. So this is the section view we want to um, examine. As you see here, on the left hand, that's the sidewalk, and uh, on the right hand, this is the slab on grid. And your foundation wall is right here, and you have your footing here. The footing is two foot wide and one foot um, deep with some rebars in it. Um, now, it is kind of tricky here um, because the foundation wall actually extends above ground and uh, eventually will become the regular side concrete mason wall. The material used here is actually 8 inch concrete CMU. Okay, So our job is we're going to create those two blocks of foundation walls. Okay, and uh, when we actually go to the architectural modeling, we're gonna add the top of the wall. The reason we would do this is trying to keep an idea on how to create a foundation wall. But in reality, you're gonna build this wall one way, um, you know, one time at the same time. So, but anyway, um, you do understand that the foundation wall part is the part actually which is below um, below grade. We have include we have include two blocks here. Okay, so that's why the depth of the foundation wall is actually one foot four inches. That is exactly why it explains why the top of the footing is minus one foot four inches because it is one foot four inches below grade. Okay, so that's the foundation wall um, detail. So let's go back to our actually floor plan a little quick. Some other details we want to examine is actually where we should place those foundation wall. Okay. Uh, if you notice, this is the grid line, okay, um, one, and the foundation wall does not, okay, align with the grid line on its center. It's actually on the exterior surface. So this is something you have to pay attention. And also regarding where does the foundation wall starts, it's actually this little portion here, as we uh, discussed before. The dimensions are actually missing. Okay, um, I will provide some dimensions when you look at my revenue model. Um, Whether the, the dimension we, um, you know, um, made assumption based upon, and also you have to pay attention to here, this extra line here between grid line A and grid line A A. There's actually another line that is important because that's the age of the sidewalk, which is one foot and one eighth inch away from grid line A. However, okay. When you look at a different node here, you will see there's a 12 inch slab edge. So there's a 1 eighth gap between the sidewalk and the slab edge. Okay, um, that's for expansion joint purposes. So that's fine, and we just keep those in mind. So literally, you can decide your foundation wall is going to start from this line and go up. The first couple of rows, um, blocks of concrete. Um, Masonry foundation wall have actually solid blue, uh, solid white color is because they gonna um, you know the um, masons is gonna pour the grout into the cells of the masonry wall and uh, to establish to actually create a column there they can put rebars there and those are gonna work as a column okay so with that information uh, all we have to do is examining where does the foundation wall starts and where does it end. So we, the foundation wall goes all the way up here, okay, line up with the grid line 1 on its exterior surface, and it goes, stops at grid line C, then go to your right, and this time also, okay, grid line C is aligned with the exterior surface of the foundation wall, okay, then all the way go to the middle section, which is actually okay, the B unit. So to examine the detail, further detail here, we need to go to the next page, which is right here, okay? And to pay attention to here, this is also very, very important because as you zoom in a little bit, you notice the foundation wall here does not actually align with the grid line 5 at all. There was a little gap there, okay? So how big is the gap? We need to actually go to the 
section view, which is at, at S4.03. Okay, well, for some reason, this section of symbol hasn't been picked up yet, but we can actually quick go to S4.03 a little quick and find out exactly what's there. Okay, so let's go to S4.3, which is the string we just examined. As you see here, okay, the exterior face of the foundation wall of all maybe actually the masonry wall is four inches away from the joists but we know that the joists is actually placed on the grid line so that means this foundation wall here okay the ex interior surface has a four inch distance from grid line five okay so that's the dimension you need to pay attention to so let's go back okay and um, same thing applied to the other side okay so this foundation wall goes here, but the grid line actually is here. This is a four inch gap here. Okay, now keep going to the next page and you see that okay foundation wall goes here and again align with grid line C on its exterior surface and go down all the way and also you notice okay the exterior surface align with the grid line twelve all the way down, down, down and stop right here, okay? which is actually at, on the edge of the um, slab edge. So that's the dimensions we need to cover um, for the foundation wall. Let's go ahead and place the foundation wall. Okay, so go to your Revit. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is place some foundation wall. Uh, there's one issue I have to resolve as well, because we're at a zero, zero level, and if we place the foundation wall, it's actually going all the way down to minus 144 inches. So you probably would not be able to see the foundation wall at this view. Let's try to see how that works. So go ahead and go to your structural wall, okay? And we're going to choose the 8-inch masonry wall, okay? And this time, we're going to choose the alignment to be the finish face exterior because we know that it aligns with the exterior with the grid line on the exterior surface. So this is what I'm going to do. Starting from here, okay, I create a little line here, okay. This is called a model line and it actually was really set at the slab edge. And I can click on that and as you see, the wall will go ahead, okay, align with the grid line one on this exterior surface. So let's go all the way up and to grid line C and stops right here. Okay? And uh, moves all the way to your right until you hit the grid line five. But remember, it does not go to grid line five all the way. It actually okay have four inches away from it. So how do you get that four inches? That's fine. We can actually adjust that later on. So we just move it here, approximately here, and keep going. Okay, keep going, keep going all the way up to grid line D, and keep going all the way to grid line eight. Go down again. Okay, and. Uh, Go all the way to grid line 12. And all the way down here to this green line I set up previously. Okay? So then I'm click on escape to finish the command twice, escape twice. Now, to learn, to learn how to create a model line, uh, it's actually pretty simple. If you go to your search tab and there's a model line on t on command. That's the model line. You draw a line and make sure that distance is actually one foot one eighth inch away from grid line A, which exactly is this line we looked at a moment ago, which is the solid line right here. Okay? So now let's fix the problem here regarding how far away this wall is. Okay? So according to the section view we looked at a moment ago here. It is four inch between the exterior, uh, interior surface of the um, foundation wall with the joists, which also is the grid line five. So what we have to do is this, okay? So we'll go ahead and go above here, okay? And uh, we just have to move the wall a little bit, okay? 
And what we need to do here is adjust the reference, the temporary um, temporary dimension. This is called temporary dimension. It's reference line. Um, we need to measure the distance between the screen line with its interior surface. Obviously, here is actually at a, its center. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on that little blue dot right there. Okay, it actually goes to the interior surface. If you click again, it goes to the exterior surface. Then you click again, it goes to the center. So it cycles through those three different places. So all we have to do is put here and put a zero, four. Remember that zero space bar four means four inches. Okay. On the other side, okay, same methodology, okay, and um, move my mouse, move the wall a little bit to its right, a little bit further, and uh, click on the wall itself, okay. Now, the dimension is actually dimensioning something completely irrelevant to this grid line. What you can do is now a different uh, technique with working with the temporary dimensions. You can click on that blue dot and hold it, drag it all the way, okay, to this particular grid line. Uh, at this moment also we have alignment issue here is line with the center of the wall so you actually need to line with the interior side of the wall. So click on that again, cycle through and make that to be 0, 4. Okay, 0 space bar 4 means 4 inches. Okay, now the only problem if you notice, I'm not sure if anyone noticed that, okay, I did not set up my base constraints for my foundation wall. Okay, so let's take a look. So how do you actually change the base constraints after you place in the wall instead of before you place in the wall, right? So if you move a mouse on one of the sections of the wall you just created, there was a way to quickly select all the wall sections you just created, okay? By highlighting, move your mouse on top of your one of the sections of the wall you created and just move on top of it, do not select anything yet and then hit your tab key and they will actually highlight all the wall sections you just created. Then you use your left click mouse that will select all the walls you just created. Okay, it's highlighted in blue. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to change. Okay, obviously you have a lot of things wrong, right? Here, the base constraints is wrong, top constraints is wrong, and my office is completely off. So those are the mistakes typically since we'll make that, you know, before they actually place in the wall. So what we're going to do I'm going to change its base constraints to be minus 1 foot 4 inches and get rid of the offsets and it sets the top constraints to be finished floor here. Okay, so this is what it is. And I click on apply and now we're done with the foundation wall. If you take a look at the 3D view, a little quick, okay, so this is going to be this little two, as you see okay, here, exactly two blocks of the uh, masonry wall. That's our foundation wall. Now, a different question becomes, since we already have our foundation wall, what, how, how about our wall foundation? The wall foundation is actually pretty tricky. Um, you will go to your structural tab and go to the foundation um, tab, um, the panel, and you will look at the wall foundation uh, command. Click on that and you will have two options here. Bearing footing and retaining footing. We're going to use bearing footing because there's a lot of bearing footing. Uh, retaining footing is for retaining walls, so um, we don't have to use retaining wall, obviously. So, but the bearing footing we have here is only three foot by one foot. Okay, so if you look at the joins, it actually shows two foot by one foot. So what you do, you're going to customize it, of course. Edit type, okay, and we're going to duplicate, and we'll call that. Okay, bearing footing 24 by 12. So don't forget, you have always to duplicate something before you change in Revit. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to change the dimensions here to be 2 and click on OK. So that is the wall foundation you will need. To place wall foundations is extremely simple. Um, you just have to click the wall you want to, you know, place a foundation underneath. So remember that we can quickly select all the sections of walls by highlighting that wall and click on the tab key and click on left click and that will place all the wall foundations okay underneath the foundation wall it's pretty cool isn't it okay so now you should have all the column column pads foundation wall and wall foundation placed so that concludes this video and we'll talk about the framing in the next video